wherever you're watching this around the world, it's your favorite channel, Win TV 247 on YouTube. And today we want to go into the business world. I uh, believe there are some people that actually champion the cause for what business leaders should look like, especially the continent of Africa. You're welcome to the world of SME Club. My name is Christopher Morris. Be right back after this break. Welcome to the world of SME Club. So, it's an honor to have you on Win TV Two Four Seven. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Um, so let's let's take it a little bit uh, back to back. Let's find out who you are. Let's have a little bit of your background in the industry before we come to SME Club. Um, okay. Um, my name is Basi Daniel. Um, I'm a banker basically by profession. That's um, that's what I've done for the bulk of my uh, professional career. I did um, some 16 years of uh, banking business in Nigeria, particularly in the areas of uh, commercial retail banking. And I've also done a bit of um, strategy. Um, but right now, since, um, but that was back in the day, you know, in, in my former life, as I like to say, <laughs> now I'm a, I'm a consultant on, um, in the areas of business and finance. I do quite a bit of work with multilateral agencies like uh, USAID and um, DFID and the likes, you know. I graduated from the Department of Business Administration, the University of Lagos, um, and then but after, after some time uh, working, I went ahead and did an MBA at the Lagos Business School, uh, which culminated into the ESA um, Business School in Barcelona, and I've also done quite a bit of, um, you know, um, personal development in the area of microfinance and, and strategic development, enterprise development and, and, and things like that. So essentially you might say um, I'm an MBA holder, and that's what you might call my highest uh, professional qualification, yeah. Okay, I left school in 1992, so um, you see I've been, I've been practicing for how long has that been? 12 years. Like, uh, no? <laughs> can't be, uh, can't be 12, that's, that's just more like 20 years. 20 actually. years, 1992. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more like 20 years. Okay. SME means um, small and medium enterprises. The club is there because it's a it's a community, it's a network, it's a, it's a network, a community for um, business people, people who want to run, who are aspire to run or are already running small and medium uh, businesses um, in Nigeria specifically, and we are also looking at um, Africa as a whole uh, in terms of our catchment area. Um, but it's, it's been registered as a cooperative society and the reason why we went ahead and did that was because we wanted to also offer the full spectrum of services including um, financial financing solutions for businesses, helping people raise capital for their business and all that. Specifically target at people who are interested in business, okay, so whether you are just thinking about going into a business or whether you are um, already in business. Um, you are welcome to join and um, well we define uh, in this part of the world we broadly define um, the SMEs to be those who employ from zero to 250 staff okay so maybe you can use that as a benchmark uh, in terms of the business size um, you there are different categories of membership there is free membership okay where you can just 
uh, register on the SME Club web, uh, website, which is uh, www.smeclub.net, and you know, join, and then you can begin to take part in the different things that we do. But then, at a point, you there are specific services we offer, which uh, are only available to financial members, where you would have to pay, register to join and pay a subscription fee to join. And even then, there are two categories of paid membership. Um, specifically, there's a category for those who are aspiring to join businesses or to start businesses or are very young in business because their needs are a bit different. And then we have this, we call those ones aspirants. And then for the ones that are a bit older, whose businesses are a bit more mature, we call that InspireNet, and then we have wow. a, a, a different set of services which are targeted at larger size, the biz, more mature businesses, you know, so that, that those are broadly speaking. training and from my experience, you know, working with um, businesses directly one-on-one -on -one because I'm, I'm also a facilitator and mentor with Faith Foundation. And so we've been on that platform. It has given me an opportunity to interact very, very deeply and directly with business people. One of the key things, uh, areas of need is in the area of strategic planning. Okay. So if you Come on to, uh, once you join, one of the first things that we do is that if you're already in business, one of the first things that we'll do for you is to do what we call a business health check, oh. which is which is similar to you going to your doctor to do a full physical check, okay. to check your blood, check your everything. So we come into your business and we take your business through this health check to say how healthy is your business and where are the areas where there are weaknesses you know uh, and so we identify those areas and, and then we begin to work with you to we, we help you sit with you and develop what we call a business upgrade plan where you um, identify the things you need to do to improve on the business and we we agree timelines okay. for how long it's going to take to do the different things and then we from that point we work with you every step of the way business and position it for growth um, because what we believe is that um, there are businesses where even if you pour a hundred million naira into them today within a year it will leak because it, the business is like a basket so if we come to your business we'll identify those leakages and we'll take you through the process of plugging those leakages so that when you get money and you pour it into that business, the business will hold the money and it will not leak. So after we have taken you through that process of strengthening the business, it means your business becomes a viable investment vehicle. Then we can then work with you to raise capital to um, invest in the business. That's quite insightful. Okay, our viewers now, uh, we'll be going for this break. When we come back, haven't had an insight into the world of uh, SME Club. Let's go into the business world in Nigeria generally. He's a veteran practitioner. We'd like him to share some of the trade secrets that we don't actually know and what's the clear definition of the typical Nigerian business for a businessman is. We'll be right back. All right, you're welcome back. So moving forward, let's have you define a Nigerian business, a typical Nigerian business. Because from this part of the continent, we, we see people run businesses as an individual and not as a system. Please, Kane. Well, okay. I don't know what um, a typical Nigerian business means. Um, what I know is that um, the challenges, the things that challenge businesses in Nigeria, yeah, there are some local peculiarities, but there are also very universal principles, okay? Um, one of the key things that um, um, would, that weaken businesses um, all over the world is when a business is being run like a, from the owner's pocket, okay? A lot of people, um, 
have not gotten to the point where they separate the finances of the business from their own personal finances. So you have a situation where somebody is running a business, and maybe he has a bank account, the bank account is in his personal name, so the, his own personal money is not separate from the money of the business. And um, so maybe his wife stops by the office and says, ah, honey, there's no food at home. He dips into the, uh, the pool. Maybe if he's running a supermarket, he dips into the till and takes out money, gives to his wife. There's no record of that that money has left the business. Um, an hour later, his daughter comes in from school. Ah, Daddy, my sandal has caught. He gives money for his hand in there and, and gives the money. Oh, go and fix it. Okay? Now, what you are likely to happen, what is likely to happen is that because the discipline has not been there to separate the personal finances from the um, business's finances, before you know it, money, the, the person finds it difficult to keep track of where the business resources are. And before you know it, the, the business, uh, he might spend that money doing personal things. And then he'll be wondering why the business is uh, cash trapped, you know. So um, that ability to manage the resources and finding the discipline to manage the resources properly is one of the things that kill, um, kills businesses very easily. And then, of course, you have uh, what you might call environmental issues, I mean, which we all know, people, the issues around power supply, the, the lack of infrastructure that kills businesses and things like that. Um, another thing I'd like to mention, which, uh, <laughs> which, which is also, I think, peculiar to Nigeria and emerging, emerging markets. So th thank you for the insight so far. So let's look at this. Um, you just made mention of some of the issues um, facing Nigerian businesses. Let's look at a scenario whereby someone is in the paid employment. Now, the major complaint we get from this particular person is that, oh, my boss is this. No, I want to quit. I want to start my own business. I don't rest and stuff like that. But when the person starts eventually, you see the person working 26 hours. He gets 24 hours and then what do you what, what do you think? Um, well, I, I think the, the, the first thing is to recognize that um, you need to know why, you need to sit down. If you are in paid employment and you are dissatisfied with your, uh, with the, the way you work or, or with the whole employment lifestyle and all that, as a life as a paid employee, and you say because of that you want to start a business, I think it's better if you sit down and really ask yourself some questions. And this is one of the things that we also do in the SME club. For those who are aspiring to start businesses, there are some self-assessment tests that we have. Uh, some of them are available online where we take people, help people to clarify their thinking. What is my reason for wanting to start a business? Okay, Because if you have that, if the reason why you want to start a business is because you want to work um, lesser hours in the day, um, then that might, you might need to think that, uh, be careful, be careful with that because what you typically find is that when you start a business, particularly in the, in the early years of the business, you are probably the only person. Maybe you can't afford to employ anybody yet, depending on how much you start with. You are likely to be working round the clock almost, okay? Which is one of the things I say to, um, for instance, the people that um, I discuss business with at Faith Foundation, for instance, is to say to them, for his, if, if uh, MTN, wants to do a business plan, MTN can afford to focus just on the company. The reason being that MTN has a lot of people working for it. So there is no there is no way you will want to make a call and the call is dropped and they'll tell you that it is because the MD is ill. Mm -hmm. Whether the MD of MTN is ill or not, you will be able to get services mm -hmm. from MTN. But for a small business, it's typically not like that. Most small businesses, at the very initial years, sometimes the um, the owner, the promoter, is the only person that the business has. And if anything happens to the person, to that promoter, it, it, the business can go under. Yeah. So I, I typically encourage uh, small business people start your business plan with a personal plan. If, for instance, you are a young lady. Um, just got married, 
think of yourself, I mean, ask yourself the question, what is your family plan? How, when do you hope to have children? Because once you get pregnant, the business will be affected. If you are, <laughs> you, do, you do understand, if you fall ill, the business will be affected and things like that. So um, it, it is important to, as you are going into your business plan, begin with a personal, a life plan. What are the things that you plan to do with your life in the next few years?